watching Field Sports TV, the biggest hunting channel there is. It's the finest pigeon shooting in the world. Tim Pilbeam's on the doves in Argentina. So I can say it's probably like snipe shooting, but this is hundreds if not thousands of snipe just keep on coming out, which is really, really good. Absolutely brilliant fun, it really is. And we have got bangs in the desert. We're here at the SHOT Show in Las Vegas, where Ticker is launching its first rimfire. We've got news, we've got hunting YouTube. Welcome to Field Sports Britain. So, Mika, this is the, the new Rimfire 2.2? Yes, yes. That's the new Tikka T1X uh, MTR, multitask Rimfire. Yeah. Big thing about this rifle is actually it, it uses the standard centerfire stock. Yeah. And you can, you can swap it basically to any other stock that uses the standard uh, synthetic uh, down um, inlays yeah. here. So you can drop you it to any, chain, you yeah. can change it multiple to anything that is on yeah. the market today for T3X. All right, yeah. 10 shot mag. 10 shot mag, yeah, available in uh, 2 2 long rifle and 17 HMR. And it's all rim fire, basically. Yeah. yeah. Also, this stock actually uses, um, it has 35% uh, fiberglass on it when we injection mold it. So, this is not your standard polymer. This is really high tech, mm -hmm. high tech synthetic. Yeah. And it also translates to the accuracy. And also, when you get uh, change temperatures, uh, it doesn't change the point of impact. Yeah. Too much. Yeah. And the trigger system on it? Trigger system is, is the standard uh, Tikka. Um, rim uh, yes, yeah, yeah. yes. So you get really, really market leader trigger. Yeah. Very smooth bolts. Yeah. Everything has been really honed on yeah. this, this, this rifle. The T3 Centifier has been probably the most successful uh, rifle in the UK market over the past decade. Uh, really popular because of its accuracy, its affordability, the engineering link to, to Seco. Um, this, I think, will be a massive hit. Uh, there is a huge demand in the UK for affordable rim fires, and I think the Tika brand, if it delivers on the promise of its, of its predecessors, is so strong. Um, you know, if they get the price point right, I think it's going to be a massive success. We've had, we've had a play with this this prototype, not fully production ready, but obviously you know it's in a it's in a T3 stock. It's going to be effectively interchangeable with the stocks and accessories for the T3, which will make it very attractive to people that want to customise it. Um, you know, it may, it's a full size rim fire. A lot of them are a little bit short in length of pull. They feel you know more of a, a, a child's gun sometimes, whereas this you know is a full sized rifle. Lots of adjustability, lots of customisation options. And from what we've had, uh, the experience we've had today, really slick to shoot, um, fantastic magazine design, and uh, yeah, I'm quite excited about this. I think this this will be a massive, massive hit in the UK. I quite like short rifles because it's easy to handle and easy to use. Yeah, and a big long hole. You swing That's around. true. We try to optimize the length. Also, the barrel lengths are optimized so that you can have the uh, 20 uh, 20 inch on on um, 17 HMR and 20 inch on a uh, 2 2 long rifle. And then we have also 16 inch version uh, if you want to go really compact. This actual one is the 20 inch version. So we even have more compact version. All come with the threading. So we have two different threading types for the American market and for the European market. Yeah. Why now? Why have you suddenly decided to do a rim fire? This has been on the table for, for, for many years and we have been um, trying different kind of concepts but then we uh, finally decided to have this kind of concept that we will utilize the center fire uh, stock. So it was the, then we felt that we have found out the exact concept, uh, how we're going to bring out the uh, 22 long rifle and 17 HMR for Tikka. 
Well, here is the ticker T1X, shiny and new, and waiting for customers at this year's SHOT Show. And there'll be more from this year's SHOT Show later in our show. Next up, someone not quite so shiny and definitely not new. It's David with the Field Sports Channel News Stump. This is Field Sports Channel News. There's officially a new gun dog breed in the UK. The Barbet is an ancient French breed that has now been recognised by the Kennel Club in Britain. Also known as the French Water Dog, there are 140 of them in the UK and it will make its debut at this year's Crufts on Thursday the 8th of March at the NEC in Birmingham. Another report shows that Field Sports Channel is the top hunting TV show, this time in Europe. Modesty forbids, but a report in association with Comscore, which counts TV viewers all over the world, and digital view counters Tubular and Social Blade shows how much bigger we are than everyone else, as well as ranking the world's gun companies, air gun channels, and even bushcrafters. Visit bit.ly forward slash hunting TV 2018 to see the whole report. If you want to get into hunting or shooting sports, there's a new website to help. Viewer Terry Humber gets in touch to tell us about countrysportinstructors.co.uk. It's a free finder service for local people who can teach you clay pigeon or game shooting, deer stalking, fishing, training gun dogs and shooting air rifles. The British Shooting Show is making it easier than ever to come along. It takes place at the NEC outside Birmingham on the 16th to the 18th of February 2018. As well as free parking you get 25% off rail travel from Virgin Rail. All you have to do is show your British Shooting Show ticket to claim your discount and Birmingham International Railway Station is 10 minutes from the NEC. Visit britishshootingshow.co.uk for more. And finally, the Polish government has gone nuts for hunting. It's passed a new law giving hunters and shooters greater privileges, enabling them to shoot over private land without the owner's permission and fining people who disturb or interfere with the hunt. It's already affected the sport of bike drawing, which is riding a bike with dogs pulling you, with this top Polish bike drawer claiming he was ordered to leave a public forest or else he risked being shot. Thanks to viewer Greg Everest for sending us the story. You are now up to date with Field Sports Channel News. Stuck in the stories, fishing for facts. Thank you, David. Now here at the SHOT Show, one of the big launches comes from the grand old German gun making firm Mauser, the new Mauser M18. <laughs> Mauser has a long heritage which started with a classically reliable action. You can mix up mud, sand, seawater and a pair of old pants, chuck it at a Mauser and still the gun will work. To explain what the new Mauser M18 is like, company boss Matthias Klotz starts with the original. Well, if you take the original Mauser M98 action, this was a controlled feed with a long extractor. Of course, this was a thinking and a theory of the late 19th century. Now we have, let's say, that reliability, the ruggedness brought into a push feed system that means three massive locks in a steel system, a cold hammer forged barrel. If Paul Mauser would have known what we are capable of with our machinery from today, he would have redesigned the M98, but he had to work with the hand labor at that time. But I think the DNA is not a long extractor or a control feed or a push feed, the DNA is the result for the customer. Ruggedness, and this is Mauser. There is the one hunter says, I need a tool. I need a tool that simply does the job, comes up well, crisp trigger, perfect accuracy, shooting exactly at the spot I am at. And for Mauser, the thing is, you know, where do we come from? The DNA of Mauser is an ultimate working horse. So I think the M18 more or less is the essence of the DNA of Mauser, because in the end it comes to a price where everyone says, actually, I can afford it. Next stop is Browning and its subsidiary Winchester. Heads up pigeon shooters. They are riffing on the semi-auto theme this year. Okay, so basically we have the new Maxus and A5 uh, design for America, but you can also find some European products. For instance, this uh, semi-auto Maxus uh, Camo Attacks uh, that uh, we will uh, probably launch in Europe this year. Yeah, so basically you have the A5 Real 3 Max 5 Camo, uh, but we will also launch in Europe uh, an A5 with the same Camo as this one. So ATAX AU uh, for Arid Europa. New rifles, yes. Uh, we will have a uh, new X-Bolt, 
again with the same camo. Uh, we have new rifles also in the XPR range. Plus there are additions to Winchester's SX4 semi-auto range. Uh, so we launched the SX4 last year. We met immediately a huge success. The SX4 won uh, uh, beat the world record of speed last year. Uh, and so this year we have decided to launch two new versions, a big uh, game uh, combo with a smooth barrel and the uh, waterfall edition of the SX4. And all of this the British show. I hope so, yeah, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of stuff gets done at SHOT Show. There are conventions within the convention, there are awards, there are dogs using escalators. Wait for it, wait for it, what a good boy. And there is a ton of products. Here are a few that caught our eyes. Now I'm off to this stand to have a look at a new range finder, but I did get a sneak peek at it a couple of months ago at the Zeiss Media Hunt, so let's go there to meet the people who designed it. We had our original HT uh, binoculars, and um, so the target was to create a model that has an integrated uh, range finder in it, and um, looks actually like a standard binocular but it has a clever little secret locked inside it. It can tell you range, of course, it's a rangefinder, and it can tell you holdover. We have Bluetooth between the RF and the app. Well, you can upload your own ballistic data into the rangefinder and you can create your own result display with up to three different result displays. It's a very bright binocular and um, this, the, the laser system here um, has a very high performance and uh, so the measuring quality is very good and so I think it's a pretty good combination in between a top-notch optical instrument for hunting and a laser rangefinder. Back here at Zeiss the boss tells me that sales are going well. Well everybody comes here it's a really compact very small um, very lightweight and and this is what really everybody asks for again we have the connection, the Bluetooth connection to the, the hunting app. So you can either put all the technical details you need for the ammunition and so on. You can change here in the binocular or you can do that on the app. Well, normally I shoot the 3006. So um, I, all my details I have in my pair of binoculars are for the 3006. And, that, and it works, it's, 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 it's good. It works perfectly. That's the reason why we just had to work about one and a half year to design this very nice piece. Next stop, the British Pavilion. All rise. It might be all America first round here, but we British are making ourselves great again thanks to the Yanks. All the traps we make are made in Liverpool and they're shipped out here to the States in a container at a time uh, with out exception. Last thing I spot is truly American. Yes, yeah, so we have um, 1200 watts of solar on this truck. Our new trucks that are coming out now, we have 1320 watts. Um, we also have two alternators on the truck. So whenever you're driving down the road, you're also charging your 1000 amp hour battery bank. So you're gonna have a hard time to run out of electricity. And, and I, I love the bathroom. Yes, <laughs> yes. We have a nice wet bath that's fully integrated. Um, we also have a hot water heater inside, but it's also hooked up to the coolant lines for the truck. So whenever you get to where you're going, the truck has already warmed up your water. So you can park, have a hot shower, enjoy your time. So in the covers we have a dish storage system that basically prevents your dishes from rattling around. So when you get to what, where you're going, you don't want to make, have any broken plates or anything. Granite countertop, we even have customers that will come out, they'll go pick the slab of stone that they want, and then we'll cut the countertop out of it for them. Um, you can have whatever backsplash you want, whatever wood interior you want. Um, we can do knotty alder, we can distress it for you to make it look like a cabin. So pretty much what you want, we can make it happen. So base price is 450000 This one's spec'd out to about five sixty, but it comes with a lot of optional extras. I mean, you have a satellite inside. So whenever you get to wherever you want to go, you can still live comfortably. And the turning circle is surprisingly good as well. For a four-lane road, you can actually do a U-turn at a stoplight. A U-turn needs a four-lane road. I might not be taking mine down the Somerset lanes then. 
It's time to leave the shot show, but I can't let it go without you seeing just how Las Vegasy the whole place is. Take it away, Bandmaster. Could you give me Andy Crow's autograph? Next up, let's go to South America with Tim Pilbeam, where we're shooting doves. When in Rome, you do Roman things. When in Argentina, you shoot doves. Tim has just landed in Buenos Aires and now our slightly weary traveller is being led to his hide. Well, we're straight in, aren't we? We left UK at 11 o'clock, 14 hours, two hour drive, 200 k's, north of Buenos Aires. It's all a bit mad at the moment, because literally within two hours, I'm shooting. Shotguns is not really my speciality. I'm a typical farmer's son. Never had a shotgun list in my life. How's the jet lag? Jet lag, well, I'm, I'm very tired actually. I've had two hours sleep and, uh, and it's... <laughs> Another one. They're coming in all different directions. Oh, they're coming from behind us now. Oh. Anyway, I just need to concentrate a wee bit and just get my eye on a wee bit. This has all been laid on for us by <laughs> Outfitter Four Seasons Adventures. They have permissions all over Argentina. In the last few years, the doves have arrived here in plague proportions. And the best bit, we're within spitting distance of Buenos Aires. Ah, oh, Boca, La Casa Rosata. Tim can tango the night away. A lot harder to shoot than actually I thought they would be. The wood pigeon's a bit bigger, a bit, maybe a bit slower. And uh, this is very, very different. It just, you know, it's, it's a, probably about a 20 mile an hour wind and up my back. So it makes quite a, quite a tricky uh, quarry, actually. It's like a snipe, actually, on the marsh. You know where a snipe gets up, it darts. And these things are doing this all the time. It's just, you know, so you've got no idea where they go. You line them up and suddenly it just goes off at a tangent. It's like, for goodness sake, guys. So you just got to follow through and hope for the best. So I can say it's probably like snipe shooting, but there's just hundreds if not thousands of snipe just keep on coming out, which is really, really good. So um, I know one thing for sure, is I shan't be taking over the mantle of Andy Crow for Phil Sports Channel, because uh, I think I stick to my rifles, because this is a very, very different uh, discipline for me. And whilst, whilst I'm, I'm a farmer and never had a shooting lesson in my life, I kind of get a few. And sometimes I get them, sometimes I don't. But uh, yes, perhaps I need a bit more practice like Andy. And uh, it's, uh, it's a bit of a change from rifle work. And it's uh, absolutely brilliant fun, it really is. We do hear very large numbers bounced around when people start talking Argentinian doves. But we don't want rumours and hearsay, we want facts. Peter Lusardi is our local dove hunting guide and we're staying in the Outfitters Smart Dove Lodge and Hotel Complex. After softening him up with a bottle of Malbec, Tim interrogates Peter. Personally, I think that this is the next Cordoba. Now, we're, we discovered this place about 10 years ago and the amount of birds that we have here is amazing. Now, actually, we brought some people from the University of Buenos Aires. Some biologists came over to make a study. And it turned out that 10 years ago, if we shot every day of the year with four hunters, killing a thousand birds per hunter per day, 
At that point, we could have not touched 5% of the duck population that we had. Uh, we never shot that much or we never killed that many. So we're looking into a big problem with the doves, but it's a great thing, you know, for us hunters. You talked about the damage they do to farmers' crops. Oh yeah, it's impressive. You know, this area was great for sunflowers. I haven't seen a sunflower field in the last six years. And they, the funny thing is that they adapt, you know, they, they don't care if it's sunflowers, soybeans, wheat. I've even seen them, you know, eating green wheat. I mean, I've never seen that before, ever. Even the farmers have to get together and kind of, you know, get together and plan at the same time so they can try to avoid the attack of the dove. You talk about um, large bags, large numbers of... Oh, yeah. Of, give me a good example of a, of a, of a good days well, or good weeks of hunting. For example, just three days ago before we got here, we had a group of 20 guys shooting, big family, they shot for three days. Between the 20 of them, they shot 60,000 shells and killed just about 50% of that in doves. You know, 30,000 doves in three days for 20 guys. Wow. When we pick uh, some of the doves, they are a lot smaller than we thought. Maybe that explains the slowish start, Mr. Pillbeam. To give you an idea of the size, look at these little things, you know. They're well under half the size of a wood pigeon and they're going at a hell of a rate as well. So they're not an easy shot, in other words. I'm making a lot of excuses for myself. But they're quite small, aren't they? Look, they fit in, in my hand. So a beautiful animal. It's like a smaller edition of a collard dove, I suppose, really. But, yeah, aren't they beautiful? Four Seasons Adventures don't just offer doves, but all sorts of feathered game with mixed bag packages. Plus, there's fishing, and they can also sort you out with a rifle for big game, which is where Tim is heading off to next. For more information about dove hunting just up the road from Buenos Aires, go to fourseasons.com.ar. From Argentina to the wider world of hunting and shooting, on YouTube it is Hunting YouTube. This is Hunting YouTube, which aims to show the best hunting and shooting videos that YouTube has to offer. First up, driven pheasant shooting in the south of England from the point of view of a spectator and with a lovely dry commentary. Your Turkish needs to be up to it, but if it is, here's how they go partridge shooting in Turkey. Today is hosted by a Turkish gunmaker ATA Arms. My Spaniel's hunting and trialling in New Zealand is a YouTube channel and he is after rabbits near Otago with a Springer Spaniel, Cocker and a German wirehead pointer. Tony Gillahan of TG Outdoors puts up his 2017 hunting highlights. He is Australia, as does Morton Schultz from Denmark. Lots of action in this film. An impressive bow hunt by Stephanie Lee Paulson, who is out in Denmark with her dad as cameraman. Rose Stalker is shooting does in Poland, no commentary, but nicely filmed. And finally, in Labrador, William Larkham Jr. is pulling a few marten traps and gets a couple of rabbits. It's a glorious day in the snow, and he admits he doesn't actually know what day it is. Oh, lucky man. That's it for this week. I have put all these films into a playlist for you. Click on the I symbol top right or check this film's description if you have a YouTube film you would like us to pop into the weekly top eight, email me the link charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv. Well, if you haven't done so already, please pop over to our website fieldsportschannel.tv where you can click to like us on Facebook, you can follow us on Twitter, you can subscribe to us on YouTube, and best of all, you can pop your email address into our constant contact form on our register page and we'll contact you about this show, Field Sports Britain, it's at 7 pm UK time every Wednesday. And as the buses line up to take us away from the Sig Sauer range day at this year's SHOT Show in Las Vegas. It's good hunting, good shooting, good fishing, and goodbye. <laughs>